guide my career. Uh, this is Siva from Department of Meteorology and Oceanography, Andhra University. Today, I gonna explain about ocean currents. So, first we will see what is a current. If somebody asks you what is a current, people immediately say that current is nothing but a flow of electrons in terms of electric field, right? But in case of ocean currents, current is nothing but a flow of water particles instead of electrons. So first we will see some introduction on currents. In introduction, I would like to answer these three questions. What are ocean currents? Why should we study about ocean currents? And how do ocean currents form? Let's have a look out. Uh, what are ocean currents? <coughs> ocean currents, it's one of the, um, it's a, one of the nice definition of ocean currents. It exactly defines what ocean current is. Say, almost permanent streams of water which flow in a definite path and direction from one part of the ocean to another part are called ocean currents. So, in general, these currents are thousands of kilometers in length and hundreds of kilometers in width. Okay? And second one, uh, why should we study about ocean currents? Means, why should we study? It's very important because if you are studying some uh, something, you should say some uh, importance of that, what you are studying. Okay? First of all, I am studying on ocean currents. I need to say importance of the ocean, studying of the important, uh, importance of the um, studying of ocean currents right so so here i just mentioned some importance of the studying of ocean currents that to understand the global ocean circulation climate change navigation etc so many uh, significances we have uh, uh, studying of ocean currents but here i just mentioned some of you okay so first we will say let me explain one thing about uh, uh, global ocean circulation see First of suppose if you want to uh, uh, see how global ocean circulation is, then you should know first of all how the ocean currents are. Otherwise, you can't say anything about the global. First of all, means if you have a no idea on a global ocean currents, then you can't say anything about a global ocean circulation because the global ocean circulation is made up of the ocean currents. Okay. Similarly, in case, of, uh, in case of climate change, the role of ocean currents in a climate change is very, very crucial. And in navigation, in navigation, it, it plays a crucial role because without proper idea on ocean currents, you can't navigate your ship from one place to another place in an ocean. Okay. And third one, how do ocean currents form? Okay. And this is one of the interesting uh, interesting thing to say that how actually these uh, currents are forming over the sea or beneath the sea. So the primary source is the sun. Because why? The sun is actually giving insulation to the earth. Okay. We are getting some ins excess insulation or the uh, equator when compared to the pole. So we are getting some unequal insulation from equator to pole. These unequal insulation causes the unequal heating. So again, these unequal heating causes the temperature variations from equator to pole. Uh, in, 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 in turn, it leads to formation, it, le it, le it leads to variation in a pressure from equator to pole. So whenever we have pressure variation, then automatically we will get a wind. So these prevailing wind in turn causes the convectional current over the sea surface. Okay. <clears throat> This is how the currents form over the sea surface. So, coming to the types of ocean currents. So, ocean currents, there are um, basically, um, there are two cl classification to, uh, uh, classification, there are two classification of ocean currents based on, uh, uh, one class, first classification is based on source of origin and second classification is based on currents motion. So, in a first classification, uh, that is the classification based on source of origin. A source of origin means with what source the current is forming or originate. For example, if you take a surface current, the surface current is always formed by the wind which is prevailing over the sea surface. So, to, to, for the surface current, <coughs> the driver is wind. Similarly, so subsurface current means the, the currents which beneath the sea surface. The surface subsurface currents or always be formed by the density variation throughout the column of ocean water, right? 
because of the density variations the subsurface sur subsurface current will be raised right so for surface currents uh, uh, all driver is wind and subsurface currents driver is density variations that's why we call surface currents as also uh, wind driven currents and subsurface currents also be called as density driven currents so this is all about the classification based on the source of origin and coming to the second classification based on the current motion <clears throat> this classification based on the current motion based on this current motion the currents can be divided into two there are warm and cold warm current is nothing but the current which originate in a warmer region like a equator and moves towards the colder region like a pole similarly cold cold current or the currents which form in a colder regions like a pole and moves towards the equator uh, warmer regions like a equator right so warmer warm currents also be called as a western boundary current similarly cold currents also be called as a eastern boundary currents because warm currents always moves along the western boundary of the ocean similarly cold currents always moves along the eastern boundary of the ocean except one current that is uh livian current which is flows along the eastern boundary of the uh, south indian ocean uh, <coughs> that is uh, west of the australia which is warm but it flows along the eastern side of the uh, south indian ocean that is different from this okay this is all about the types of the ocean currents similarly and uh, what is the next one factors affecting the ocean currents so some factors we have that affects the ocean currents those are topography temperature salinity and coriolis force and let's see how these uh, factors uh, affect the ocean currents for suppose topography for suppose one current which is coming from the straight line direction uh, when it reaches some uh, obstacle like a uh, an land mass which is aligned which is aligned like uh, pointing towards the southward direction or northward direction then not then automatically the current also get deflected diverted to the south or northward direction right means when a current which is um, a following which is coming which is uh, in a straight line direction approaches the any obstacle like a land mass then automatically it follows the shape of that land mass means the direction of the current will be uh, uh, same as the uh, shape of that land mass okay this is how the topography uh, does affect the ocean current and come into the temperature as we discussed so far uh, till now we discussed uh, how temperature is uh, affecting on ocean currents affecting on ocean currents that uh, because of the temperature variations we will get uh, automatically density variation because of the density variations uh, the water will uh, water will get moved from high dense to low dense this is all about the temperature okay and salinity <clears throat> salinity is also one of the interesting thing that when you have some high saline water means say saline water means uh, salinity and the water which has high dense also means when you have a high saline water that does mean that cell that water has a high dense water similarly when you have a low saline water uh, which has a low density then automatically high dense water always try to move towards the low saline water because there is one uh, that is because there is some property uh, phen uh, property of any phenomena means for suppose that is the um, balancing balancing nature of a uh, phenomena in either in atmosphere or either in a ocean for suppose if any phenomena which is taking place in uh, uh, ocean and atmosphere that phenomena always try to be in a balancing mode for suppose to understand it balance to understand this balancing mode i will say one example that for suppose if you have a cup of coffee you place it in uh, you place it that in a open area and uh, at any stage at initial stage the it was very hot means the temperature of that coffee is very high and compared to its surrounding right over a time the temperature of that coffee will be same as its surrounding because why it tried to to be stable with respect to its surrounding means balancing okay this is how um, uh, 
the salinity high saline water always try to move towards the uh, low saline water in the form of the subsurface current okay to balance the uh, phenomena okay this is how the salinity does affect the ocean currents direction and movement everything similarly and the third one Coriolis force the Coriolis force as we know that the force which deflects the uh, direction of uh, <coughs> deflects the actual direction of a, a moving body or a fluid or anything for suppose in generally we know that uh, the Coriolis force which is arises due to the rotation of the earth which deflects uh, <coughs> original direction of any bo uh, moving body or any fluid uh, to uh, its uh, <coughs> right side in the northern hemisphere and similarly uh, deflects to left side uh, from its actual direction in southern hemisphere means uh, to understand it very clearly i can say one example that for suppose if one current is coming from east to west in another hemisphere then automatically it will get deflected to the right of its actual direction means from west to east from east to west it is coming then it automatically turns towards the north pole this is how the Coriolis force will also be uh, change the <coughs> uh, direction of the currents ocean currents okay